So let's take a look at an example where I want to convert a list of strings into floats, or rather just if it is a floating point number, convert it into a float. So in this case, I've got a string separated by commas, and I've split them based on that comma. And so now I have a list uh, of elements. Some of them happen to be strings. Some of them are integers and some of them are floats. Now, specifically, when we want to convert something like an integer, we can do int, that's great. And we can also do, you know, something like float here, but the issue is knowing which one of these commands to operate from. Now, if I were to take this snippet of code and plug it in, so let's just first build out that string. Hello, 3.14, 42, uh, what was the last word, test. And then uh, values at string dot split on the comma. Values. Okay, so again, we have uh, our list of values that we want to process. Now again, each thing is currently a string, and we can see that in action. If I were to for i or, or for uh, value in values, print value and type value. Type is just going to tell me what the data type of this particular element is, and we can see everything is still a string. That's perfectly fine, but once again, we want to process these and we need to handle them in some way. Now, the issue is that strings have a few functions available to them. For example, uh, value dot is numeric. Now, is numeric is going to look at the contents of a string and it's going to say whether or not it's just numbers. So you can see for 42, we get a true statement, but you may notice that that 3.14 still is saying false and there is no is float, right? Oh, look at that. There is no is float or a uh, similar function for floating point numbers. So how could we handle this? And specifically, how could we do it with exception handling? Well, that's a great, consideration. The way we can is let's first build out is float. In this case, and let me actually clear out that. There we are. <clears throat> well, the idea behind this is what we're going to do is we are going to just say, screw it. Let's try and convert it into a float. If it can, then awesome. If it cannot, then well, oh, that's something like a string. So in that case, first thing we would do is we'd open up with the try block. Return float value. Now again, what this is going to attempt to do is whatever that value happens to be, it's going to attempt to return it. However, let's accept because if it's not convertible, then we can't convert it. It's uh, it's hello, it's test. It's not a floating point number. So in that case, what I'm going to do, since we're asking specifically, is it a float, then we can use a Boolean return statement. So return false. So now we happen to have, in our case, uh, a way to understand and process whether or not a string is a floating point number. So let's try and convert this into uh, the respective ints and floats that it needs to be. So for i in range len values, so we're going through each one of the elements. 
and now we're going to do a conditional statement. The first one is, let's just see first if it is numeric, if it is just a numerical value. If, that, uh, let's see, we'll, we'll shorthand this, so val is values at i, that's more for easier processing. So if val dot is numeric, because if that is a true statement, again, uh, we don't have it here, but 42, uh, this string 42, that would be a true statement. We want to convert it. So values at i is going to equal int val if in val. We could also do uh, values at i. Both of those are going to work. It's more just I want to I'll, I'll keep it at values at i, you know. But again, the entire idea here is now, okay, well, we've handled just our, our integers. And just to see this in action for a second, uh, let's once again print our values. You can see that the 42 has converted. But once again, uh, 3.14 didn't convert into a float because we didn't build it. But it's not being converted because it's not considering that a numeric value. So let me boom that, boom that. Now we're going to add in a conditional statement, L if, L if, and now instead of doing val dot is float, that still won't work, right? Val uh, is float, just to show this, it's still gonna crash, right? It's still not, that's not how we built out our float. We didn't modify strings, the entire string uh, object to have this is float function. Instead, we could do is float val. And same kind of thing is gonna go on here. Oh, well, if it can, uh, you know, oh, it'll return the float. Now, let's see, I will actually change this a little bit. So is float. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, return true. There we are. So same kind of thing. It, just doing some different logic here uh, because I want a true statement. And in that case, instead, values at i, instead of it being a uh, integer, would be a float. And so once again, just to load that up, and I got to reset the is float in memory because, again, I've just modified it. So once again, I run it. Oh, look at that, no errors, because again, that got processed appropriately. And so if I print this out, what do you know? I happen to have a floating point 3.14. So again, this is how you can use a try except block for some easier processing when you're starting to run into things where you, know, you want something to happen or not.